It's surprising how getting into really nerdy, detailed, deep stuff actually reaches a lot of people because a lot of people want that information and they don't know where to get it. So a deep dive into a particular Eddic poem or an explanation of how to read a particularly difficult text or an explanation of some complicated grammatical feature in Old Norse actually reaches several thousand people on, on average. Well, I think that uh, this fascination that has arisen in the last 20 years really starts with the Lord of the Rings movies by Peter Jackson. And of course, it's fairly well known that Tolkien based a lot of the elements of his mythical worlds on Norse and Finnish mythology. And so I think that Norse myth uh, experienced a big resurgence of interest because of that. I think that Norse myth is sort of excitingly incomplete. It's not just that our sources aren't always as whole as we would like them to be because we have only so much preserved or because something's in an imperfect manuscript or something like that. But often within the sources themselves, there's deliberate incompleteness. There are references to little factoids that never get explained. Like, why does, what does it mean that Heimdallr has nine mothers? Right, these things are just, I think they're meant to be mysterious, but the same mystery that's inherent to that medieval text appeals to modern people who want to they, they want to know what's beyond that fog, what's hidden behind these these uh, these curtains, and uh, it's always more intriguing to wonder what's there than to know. I don't know that I can explain people's nerdy interests. I don't know that I can explain my own nerdy interests. But the thing is, most people are fascinated by the world, they're fascinated by history, they're fascinated by language. The world is hungry to know more.